What are the best frames for a sub 250 gram, three inch to four inch wax nail build? Uh, well, I mean, I think the AOS three inch is solid. Uh, and definitely going to get you under 250 grams. That's going to take you up to three and a half inch. Let's see. That's my first thought. I think that many of the downsides of the AOS frame, which is that it's like not the most durable. I think when you get down to the sub 250 category, they're alleviated because with that small amount of weight, you don't have as much energy going into a crash. Um, the Apex Micro 3-inch is a really solid choice. We're looking right here at the uh, fpvknowitall.com, which is my website. My website, fpvknowitall.com. And I always refer to my own website, which has the ultimate FPV shopping list on it. I kind of made this website, number one, because people are always asking me, hey, what do you recommend? And I thought, wouldn't it be nice if I just had a website that had all my recommendations in one place? But also so that I can remember, because sometimes I don't remember off the top of my head certain categories. And in fact, I've even had other people come in, like Ciati. Ciati worked a lot on the Tiny Whoop page because he knows more about Tiny Whoops than I do. Uh, and so if you're looking for product recommendations, check out fpvknowitall.com put a link here in the chat why not um so as far as frames go quad mula siren f3 split i have up here the qavs mini three inch is an okay frame but it's a little heavier you'll still get under 250 grams with a three inch but uh We'd have to make sure that these frames are going to hold the walk snail VTX. But if it's the 1S VTX, I think you're going to be fine. So those are some suggestions. Rauk FPV wants to know why I don't have a long range category. Rauk, uh, it is essentially impossible to do long range legally in the United States. And I'm not willing, I, I'm not, like, I don't, like have a like a deep love for long range like if i like loved long range and was passionate about it i might try to find a way to do it without getting in legal trouble but i don't have like a deep abiding passion for long range and it's it's difficult it's impossible to do it legally you need wa bvlos waivers and they're essentially impossible to get for normal people and here's the thing it is much more difficult to have plausible deniability about long range stuff, at least from my perspective. So like if I post a video on my channel and I'm flying around my yard, right? Some people might say, well, does Bardwell have a spotter there? Does he have his line of sight to his drone at all times? And these are questions that are difficult to decisively answer yes or no under some circumstances. Like, there's enough ambiguity. What was the date of this flight? No one knows. So there's there are cases where there's enough ambiguity uh, that I don't feel like... And it is possible to do it legally, right? Whereas BVLOS, like long-range flights, it is not possible to even have plausible deniability that you're doing it legally. Whereas flying around my yard... I could be doing it legally. I am doing it legally, as far as you know. <laughs> and if you suspect that I'm not doing it legally, you don't actually have proof, probably. Fingers crossed. Uh, so with long, I've just the the combination of not having a deep abiding passion for long range and the difficulty of doing it without getting in trouble without painting a target on your back means that I just don't I don't go long range. Fortune says, we just refer to our footage as something we found on an SD card in the field. It's extremely tongue in cheek. Yeah, Fortune, that reminds me, uh, for those of you who, I'm gonna reveal things about my past here. You remember back on Project Blue Light where everybody referred to someone who isn't me, Swim? Project Blue Light was, maybe still is, I don't know, a forum about drugs. 
Sorry, kids, cover your ears, kids. And people would ask questions about drugs and they would say, someone who isn't me wants to know about blah, 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 blah. And they were like, they were trying to maintain plausible deniability and it was all silly. It was just silly. So like that's the FPV equivalent of I found an SD card. I, I'm not sure how much that actually protects you, right? I'm not sure how much that actually protects you though. Anyway. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Bob Wyatt wants to know FCC hack for goggles, V2 goggles on 0107. Bob, uh, as far as I know, well, first of all, the FCC hack is done on the air unit, not the goggles. The 1200 milliwatt hack is done on the goggles. So if you're trying to put the FCC hack on the goggles, that's why it's not working. The FCC hack goes on the either, if it's a full size air unit, it goes on an SD card, it goes in the SD card reader. If it's a Vista, then it goes in the USB drive that pops up when you power up the Vista plugged into USB. Um, it works on, there has never been a firmware for which the FCC hack doesn't work though. No one has ever, the DJI has never locked it out, so it should be working. Uh, Luca Torno wants to know, how can I flash an Express LRS receiver stuck in bootloader mode? The answer to that question, Luca, is uh, either use an FTDI adapter or some other similar serial programming adapter or use Betaflight pass-through, although Betaflight pass-through is quirky to get working right. And so the safest thing to do is to desolder it and use an FTDI adapter. I do want to show you this. Uh, I want to show you. Why can I not find it? There we go. Uh, is this it? I want to show you this. This is the Beta FPV Express LRS recovery dongle. It is essentially an FTDI, or sorry, it's a CP210. No, FTDI. That's a... Is CP210 the same thing as FTDI? I don't think they are. Do you have an opinion about that, Blunty? I don't know. Okay. I think they're just keyword stuffing here. I don't think CP210 and FTDI are the same thing. I think they're actually two different things that solve the same problem. But anyway, my point is this. This is essentially a serial programming adapter, but it comes with a nice little pin header here that easily stuffs onto an Express LRS receiver. And if you have a receiver stuck in bootloader mode, this is probably, I, I feel uh, so weird, like rec highly recommending a beta FPV product because a lot of times they're flaky. But this is one of the easiest ways to flash an Express LRS receiver in bootloader mode. And it's 12 bucks if we search for if we search for an FTDI adapter, okay, you can get an F a cheap FTDI adapter for six or seven dollars, but then you're also going to need to like rig up a wire header, and it's going to be a pain in the ass. And to me, this is actually a pretty freaking good deal because it just is ready to go. So if you don't have one, this is this is what I'd suggest you get. If you do have one, Mister Huggy says CP210 is the chipset, FTDI is the protocol. Oh, I didn't know that. That's interesting. That's There's also an Arduino F FTDI chipset. So I, I don't know. It's very confusing if you actually look it up. Because Arduino well, has an FTDI 2232 chipset. Or there's a CP210 so chipset. So if, if FTDI is the protocol, then this could be the serial to USB chip. And then if FTDI is the pro, I, I don't really know, though. Maybe, I, I, yeah, okay. Bottom line, if you don't have one, I suggest the Beta FPV Recovery Dongle. It's pretty solid. 